Alright, welcome back. This is my second touch designer tutorial. And today we're gonna be building whatever you can whatever this is. <laughs> it's like uh, some artwork based on the audio frequency spectrum. So um, I really like working with that because like really like taking in every sound that there is in the audio file or audio device. And yeah. I'm just gonna pause this. This is the um, network that I'm gonna be re rebuilding with you in a second. And it's gonna be quite a lot of chop work and uh, then a feedback loop and a little displays um, top thingy there to achieve this effect. And I'm just gonna show you what size my project container is. It's like 1920 by 1080, so full HD. You can have this whatever you please. So we're gonna dive right in. I'm going to delete this and rebuild this with you step by step. So bear with me. First thing is uh, we need an audio file in. You can also take a device in, but I'm gonna take the audio file and select the song that I just uh, showed you. I'm also gonna, with the middle mouse, I'm gonna attach a device out here, but not like, like gonna bypass this because I don't want it to be playing the whole time. All right, and then here to the null, I want to attach a math, combine the channels um, with the add method, and then we just have uh, one channel, as you can see here. And we want to normalize this, and I'm gonna do that with this envelope trick that I showed you last time. So we just put the envelope width to 10, and attach a math here, and attach the envelope again to the math. And then in the math on the combined chops, I'm going to select divide. So now, whatever you put in here, it's gonna be normalized between minus one and one. Okay, so as I said, we're working with the audio spectrum, so I'm going to attach that here and not change anything about it. It's fine the way it is, the default values. And then here, I want a resample chop. So I'm putting that here and as, uh, yeah. So here in the time slice, I'm gonna turn that off we we want the whole thing and um on the method i'm going to change that to new rate and new interval and now out of this channel i'm going to make two and i'm going to do that by uh adding a rename here and simply copy paste that so it's going to drop one yeah so um we want to rename this to spec for spectrum and the other one to size because we're going to map that to to the size of the circles that we're going to be working with. And here, the spec, I want it to be sorted. Uh, that just makes for a nicer effect. And I want to use the sorting method random here. And this rename I'm going to attach to a math because, as I said, we want to map that. So on the range, I want it to be mapped from 0 to 1 to 0 0.2 and like 3. And we're going to mess around with that later. And here I am going to merge these two. And there's going to be two more channels being merged in there. And we're going to be working with instancing again, so I'm just going to call this instances. Okay, so now for the resample thing, we want to base that uh, on a grid. So I'm going to drop a grid here again. Um, so I changed the grid size to be 1 by one, 0 0.1. And, uh, oops and just change the rows to be one. Let's turn on the wireframes, you can see it. And the columns to be 150. So then I'm going to attach this to null once again. And then convert it to a to chop with the sub to chop. 
and then I'm going to attach this to another now. But before I do that, I want to just select the TX. So I take the select chop and on the channel name simply type TX or you can take it from the drop down menu. Okay. So this now we're going to be using a lot as a reference. So first we're going to drop that in here. So the lengths of uh, these two channels um, match. And now I'm going to drop two noise channels. The first one I'm going to drop up here and change its name on the channel tab to TY. because so that's going to be our Y transform and in instancing. And um, just copy this resample chop and drag it up here and change the input zero source to be the noise here. And um, just for good, yeah, just gonna <laughs> attach the two now and then put that into the merge, shift it up here so it looks more beautiful. And there we go. So that's the first channel of the two noises. And now the second noise. For that, I can simply copy these two chops and pass them down here. And on the noise two, uh, one thing I want to do here on the noise one is change the period to 0 0.5. And here on this one to 0 0.3. And here I want the channel name to match this. So it's going to be TX. So we have two TXs that we want to merge now. And we do that with a math. Just gonna drop that math there. Take all of this, shift it down a bit, and then uh, connect this to here. Now I have two channels and want that to be one by combined chops. Add. So now we have not a straight line, but a noisy TX line. It's just gonna help with shifting the positions a bit. It's gonna make it more interesting. One thing I forgot as well is here these two. You can just select them both and on the, their transform page. And the X, I want uh, like I'm gonna put a little Python expression here that you probably know, which is apps time dot seconds. And now both of these are uh, you know moving in in time a bit. It makes more for a more interesting as effect as well. Okay, so I'm also going to attach that to the merge. Now we have all four channels that we need here. So the TY position, the randomized spectrum, the uh, mapped size, which is also based on like the mapped spectrum basically, and the, the, this noisy TX value. Okay, so, so far for the chop part, now I'm going to instance um, circles. So I'm going to drop the circle stop here and um, attach that to a transform and just going to make the size uh, quite small. So 0 0.05 is the sweet spot for me. <laughs> and um, attach this to a geo again. All right. So what we need now for rendering as well, I'm just going to do that already before we instance, is a camera. And I'm going to be working with constant again. So I'll drop a constant material here, uh, pull it on here, say parm material. And the constant, we want to change the alpha to be 0 0.5. And on the common page, turn on the blending transparency. Okay, so. I'm already gonna render this so we can see it better um, what we do with the instancing. Attach the render to null, pull it away over here and change its name to be BG. And I'm gonna turn on the display and now we see this beautiful kind of transparent circle there in the background. Okay, so on the geo, on the instancing tab here, I'm gonna turn on instancing and drag our null instances on here. So um, the translate x, we want that to be uh, matching to the tx. So now you can see what this value actually does. Like if I turn on, uh, turn off the noise, here it's just going to be like the straight line. And now 
this way it's just shifting around a bit, making this more interesting, in my opinion. Um, for the uh, translate y, so the height, or yeah, the y um, position, we're going to use the ty. So this channel that we've created here, this noise channel. So it's kind of this point cloud that's shifting around there, or noising around. Okay, so we've also created the size that's based on the spectrum. For that, I'm actually going to turn on the audio and um, change the scale X to the size and the scale Y also to the size. So now you can already see that like the, the size is like um, reacting to the audio. And on the instance 2 tab, off for a second. Um, we want to change the colors. So the R I'm just gonna leave now. Just leave leave blank. Leave leave blank. Um, and the green I'm going to change to spec and the blue as well and the alpha as well. So again I'm just gonna turn this on. And get this nice uh, red white transparent circling cloud thing that's reacting to the music in the background. All right, so now we want to change that information with a few top, yeah, a few tops. So first thing we're doing here in the tops is um, building a feedback loop, as I said in the beginning. So I'm gonna drop that here and change its operation type to be add. And now with a middle mouse, I'm going to add a feedback here and drop the comp one onto the feedback. And we want to attach three things here. First one, the first one is transform. And we want to transform the scale. And uh, that not too much. Like we can play around with that later, but I'm just gonna put it to like 1.012 for now. Okay. And then uh, here we want to change the opacity. So I drop a level in here and on the post change the opacity to 0 0.97. And then uh, the last thing we want on here is a blur. All right, so we've, now we've done that. I'm not gonna change anything on the blur. Just attach this to the comp and now you get this sweet, uh, yeah, whatever this effect is feedback effect I guess <laughs> okay so um, so far so good now we want to change I want to change the colors so I drop a look up in here and I also don't want the background to be black so that's perfect with the ramp not projection I want a ramp and attach that to the input image here so now you can see the background is black and now I want to change the whites. That's exactly what this does. So I change the whites to be blue. Okay, now the song ended. <laughs> okay, there you go. Just gonna turn this on. Okay, so it's already looking pretty cool. You can change this to whatever you want, of course. So like other colors give a different kind of feel to it. I just like the blue for now. And I'm gonna drop another blur in here, which is gonna be a bit more, like a bit less subtle. So 15 is a sweet spot for me. And now how we achieve that kind of glitchy effect is simply with a displace top. So I'm gonna add that in here. Pause this for a second. And um, on the displace, we want like we want to displace the image or the video by itself. So I'm just gonna drag this on and down here as well. So they're both connected to the displays. Not looking too good for now, but you can already see it going to the right direction. And it's gonna I'm gonna make this a lot more subtle. So on source midpoint it's gonna be 0 0.05 instead of uh, 0 0.5. And the displays weight I want that to be 0 0.1 instead of 1. And there you go, like that's kind of the effect that we want. Um, so we're basically done here. There's just a couple of things that you can do now. 
So the first thing is dropping a level at the end, which is always, I think, a good practice, because now you can like change the brightness, uh, gamma and everything, just a bit more in control that you're showing. So that's uh, one thing. And you can play a around a bit with the feedback loop. You can change the scale, for example. Like, I wouldn't do too much, this is just gonna be ex too extreme. But, um, like, very subtly, you can change this to be a bit higher, and then it's like, floating towards you more. You can also rotate this by one, for example, and it's going like this. Also cool. And, um,. Yeah, you can drop whatever else you want in the feedback loop there. So there's definitely a room to play there. And also you can change here, like on the map 3, you can change the, the range of it. So you can make this higher to like 5. So like the maximum, it's gonna, like the maps, maximum size is just gonna be uh, higher. You can also drop this down to 0. Just maybe leave that at 3. So now the circles are basically really only shown when when the, um, you know, it's loud enough. <laughs> okay, well, I like the 0 0.2, you can also make one, and then there's always circles. All right, so I think uh, 0 0.2, I really like that. Yeah, I think that's that's it for now. Of course, you can like play around with, with all the different things, also with the noise and the grid, like change parameters there. And um, yeah, I think that's it for now. I hope you like this one. Also, I want to thank you for the positive feedback of, uh, that I've gotten so far. Like, it's really motivating. I'm definitely gonna continue with making tutorials. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one.